Hello everyone, uh, I'm MJ. I'm an assistant professor at UNIST uh, since last year. Uh, today I'm going to talk about our characterizing study of GPU cluster designed for deep learning training workload in Microsoft. This work was done when I was in Microsoft along with the courses Shivram, Amaru Junji, Wenchung, and Fan. Deep learning based technology has been widely applied in many domains such as speech recognition, image classification, and recommendations. With the popularity of those applications, more and more deep learning models should be trained. Deep learning training requires specialized hardware such as GPU, and uh, with increased demand for deep learning, many companies have built their own GPU clusters uh, for internal use, such as Philly in Microsoft. This work is based on Philly, a cluster resource manager for deep learning training workload for large-scale multi-tenant GPU clusters. There has been many recent research of uh, GPU cluster managers for deep learning, and a number of those research was actually motivated by observations in Philly, the Philly that I'm going to talk about today. We've seen a great increase in scale of Philly uh, over years. For example, during 2017, uh, the number of deep learning jobs increased more than 10 times, and also the size of cluster increased by five times. Philly cluster manager sits in between uh, machine learning applications and hardware resources and provide all these functionalities such as resource scheduling, uh, storage management, and failure handling. This is very similar to existing big data uh, system cluster managers. Now let's start uh, by describing the job life cycle in Philly. Uh, users are submitting their training jobs in online fashion and spe specify the number of GPUs for training. Uh, and job schedulers uh, decide the execution order of those jobs in the job queue. And once job is scheduled, a placement scheme will allocate the required amount of resource for the job uh, from the cluster and place that job onto the cluster for execution. And once job execution complete, uh, the allocated resources will be reclaimed. And this is overall how job life cycle in Philly looks like. And in this work, we, we make three contributions. And first, this is the uh, first characterization study of large scale GPU clusters using real world data, which we collected from Philly. The second, we study the cluster utilization and how efficiently GPUs are being used in the cluster. And the third, we present lessons for better cluster design. Okay, now I'm gonna talk about the first contrib contribution by giving some details about the study itself. Uh, the, for the study, we collect the data over 75 days, uh, including information of more than uh, 96,000 training jobs uh, across thousands of users. And the data itself reflect the multi-tenancy because Phil is shared by 14 production groups. I think this is what makes our study very unique and interesting. But the challenge part is capturing uh, inefficiency across all of these stages. So for, uh, for this, we collect the following the log messages uh, out of stages. The first, uh, the log from scheduler to capture information about job arrival time and GPU allocation and which status a job finished with. The second, hardware performance counters to capture information on uh, the hardware utilization for GPU, CPU, and memory and network. The third, print out messages from AI engine, including job progress information, especially convergence information, and also failure-related information. Uh, we combine all of these together uh, to track the scheduling decision and the utilization information of each, each individual job uh, during its job life cycle. So I told you about the study details and given this, now I'm going to share the study of cluster utilization and then GP utilization. The first question we are gonna ask is, uh, in Philly, most GPUs are allocated for users because of very high demand, but how, effi how effectively these GPUs are used for deep learning training? This is our first question. Uh, in fact, in our cluster, uh, GPU utilization is low. The question is why GPU utilization is so low. To begin with, uh, for single GPU jobs, utilization is around 65% uh, for the median, as you can see in the figure. And while this is uh, kind of lower than we would expect, this is not the focus of our study. There are actually many uh, people looking at this problem using, for example, uh, better compilation techniques or better corners to improve, uh, improve GPU utilization. And in this study, we are more focused on 
uh, how distribution affect the utilization. So as we increase the number of GPUs for the job, uh, we can see the decrease in the GPU utilization. Right? There are many two reasons for this. The first is distri distribution of jobs across the servers. And the second is intra-server interference across jobs. So there are micro benchmarks showing the effect of intra-server interference only in the paper. And what I'm going to explain next is the impact of um, distribution only. Okay, so to understand the effect of distribution, we filter to uh, just eight GPU jobs running on single eight GPU machine versus 16 GPU jobs running on two eight GPU machines. So these jobs run on dedicated server and there's no other jobs in the same server running together. And then we draw a CDF of GPU utilization uh, for, for both cases as you can see in the figure. And if you look at the typical case by drawing a horizontal line at 50% which is median, we can see that both cases have almost like 30% of difference in terms of GPU utilization. So the takeaway is that distributed training itself causes utilization to go lower. Okay, now given this locality and distribution and performance numbers I've shown you, really there, there exists some trade-off between the locality and the queuing delay. And here is an example. Uh, so scheduling policy can be locality aware and they can take high interest of locality to allocate all GPUs of the jobs in the, within the single server in this case. So achieving high communication efficiency but requiring longer queuing time. But for users in company, one of the main requests was getting onto the cluster as soon as possible. Uh, so scheduler can reduce queuing delay by relaxing the intra-server locality. But uh, with the increase on in the network contention, and the risk of interference within the server amongst, among the jobs in the, running on the same server, especially in the use of shared resources such as PCI bandwidth. So in general, this is what makes GPU utilization go lower uh, in the case of running on low intra-server locality. Uh, okay, I told you about GPU utilization. Then let's take a look at uh, cluster utilization, especially how job failures affect cluster utilization. To make progress of failure, uh, Philly allows retry on failure using checkpoint and recovery technique. But if a uh, training job fails multiple times, it becomes unsuccessful training and this wastes cluster resources. In our data, there is an average of one, one failure uh, per distributed training job, uh, and this number is not dominant yet. But with increase of the large scale training, uh, this could be dominant in the future. The most challenging part is that the failure can occur across the software stack, anywhere in the software stack from the infrastructure to AI engine and the user program. So it's not easy, uh, it's not easy even tell where the failure is coming from. Uh, the, our study is able to classify failure and the reason about uh, where failure happens and how bad it is, and more importantly use this information to improve the existing failure handling. Okay, uh, here's a failure classifier which does actually uh, collect all failure related information and analyze it. So first, assuming that we are collecting this kind of information, then we can easily get who generate fails and how many GPU hours the training consumes on the failure by simply, by simply looking at the job status itself. The tricky part is identifying where failure occurs. To facilitate it, our classifier parses STD out and the standard out and the standard error files uh, to extract the failure signatures. And once failure signature is extracted, uh, we can classify the failure and then infer where failure is belonging to across software stack, among infrastructure, AI engine, and user program. So I do like to note that the current version of uh, the failure classifier uh, has signatures and failure categories which were hand-built uh, by simply analyzing the older logo messages from failure. So the technique to incorporate new failures without any manual process will be adding a lot of value in this research. Uh, yeah, I'll show you two types of failures uh, acquired from running our classifier. The first is failures in, in high frequency. And these failures fall in uh, six 
categories, uh, as you can see in the figure. And then if we add up the number of failures across all of this, uh, uh, it accounts for as much as 75% of all the failures existing in the system. Uh, and in our data, we observe that region is mostly because of usual errors in code and, and, and the configuration. So we found most of these failures uh, are repetitive and appearing early. And then the second type of failure is failures in uh, the high resource usage, which, which we measure from the GPU hours spent by the failed job. And then these failures are kind of falling into the four categories, as you can see in the figure. And if we add up the amount of GPU hours spent by all fail, failed jobs across these categories, uh, it accounts, accounts for as much as 73% of all the, all the GPU hours spent by the failed job. And in our data, we observed that the region is mostly because of infrastructure failures. And we found that most of these failures uh, spread across many layers of a system stack, including uh, the storage and communication and network stack. Okay, then I'm going to present very interesting lessons that we, we learned from this study. The first, locality versus waiting time. The users, of course, prefer uh, lower queuing delays, but initial delays in locality aware scheduling can far outweigh giving up locality for especially long running jobs. So to, to make this point concrete, let me take two examples. The uh, first, you start with a long running job and it takes around 24 hours to complete. But if you wait for one hour for very higher locality, then it is gonna take only 16 hours to complete. Then here, initial delay is one hour, uh, not zero minute. So it looks like very awful amount of time which was not pre preferred by the users. But if you think about the overall learning time, it's one hour plus uh, 16 hours, so 17 hours, which is much lower than the 24 hours. So uh, we think to get better locality packing, schedule need to consider the, uh, the trade-off between the queuing delays and the impact of the locality aware scheduling. And this loca locality aware scheduling should be applicable to only long time learning jobs, not exploratory jobs, which might be uh, short learning or might may be killed by the users. The second, uh, at the very beginning, it's very hard to know uh, whether the job is long running or not. So the effective or simple, very effective technique is that you start from the low locality and then later on do migration if you, if you identify that you know, this job is long running. Okay, uh, for failures that are reparative and uh, the repeating, uh, the, the kind of uh, uh, reparative, uh, in this case, we can, you can improve the cluster utilize, utilization by catching those failures early. So for example, uh, simple validation of jobs uh, before going into the scheduling, especially the pre-learning those jobs on the very cheap VMs or cheap servers, uh, can avoid a majority of those failures. In our, in our case, as much as 42% uh, of all the failures in our cloud. Then the consequence is that we can avoid, uh, avoid the GPUs even being placed on the, on, the, on the cluster, thereby improving the cluster utilization. Okay, uh, there are more uh, details in the paper, paper about in case we have a queuing delay, so whether the queuing delay is coming from the fail sharing or the fragmentation, or what is the impact of out of order scheduling, because the YARN is the work conserving, for example. And then uh, how to mitigate the failures at long time. And then more importantly, the last thing is very interesting, uh, is the effectiveness of last epochs. Like in case of the, we have to pay some resources for the last epochs, how, how they are contributing uh, the convergence. Okay, uh, to conclude, uh, I, I'm emphasize that this is our first characterization study um, of the large scale GPU clusters for deep learning training. And then we talked about some inefficiencies that exist in the, in the use of the cluster resources. And then we provide some lessons, uh, especially the locality aware scheduling and the failure handling. And then uh, we are very happy to announce that, uh, happy to announce that uh, we, we are releasing the traces. Actually, that was released like as of yesterday. And then uh, we are really looking forward to more kind of research outcomes coming out, out of our trace and we will be very happy with that. And thank you and I will take uh, any question. Young Jin. Any questions from Young Jin? Please introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Tom.
Thomas from TU Bean. I was wondering whether you have some insights on how users are using your cluster. I've been studying other GPU clusters used for deep uh, learning, and we found that there are a large portion of users who just run Hello World training jobs on your cluster, and then there's another set of users where it's like key accounts that run like two week long jobs or something. And I'm wondering whether you could incorporate that kind of knowledge into scheduling decisions and things like that. Have you thought uh, about that? So actually, the, there's nothing like that in the, in the production cluster. Actually, almost there are two types of jobs. One is the very mature training after you do the kind of the parameter sweeping and you already kind of establish the, the model. And the other type is the parameter sweeping. We don't have a kind of hello world kind of thing. Uh, but I think from the perspective of, the, of job scheduling, I think it, it is not able to differentiate, differentiate kind of what, what they are running uh, within the scheduler. Mm -hmm. okay. Hi, Chen from Uber. So my question is, uh, when we would observe really large-scale distributed machine learning, especially deep learning, we saw a clear benefit of rack affinity. And uh -huh. for uh, the, the topic you talk about, failures, generally we find like this affinity is a, is a kind of way to go to kind of mi minimize the risk. So how, what's your take on this? What, so, so, so in any case, you are talking about the hardware failures in reg level? Yes. Uh, so the, the analysis is mostly focused on the, uh, the software driven the failures. Actually, we don't have any insight about hardware failures. OK. Um, I, I don't, I'm sorry, I don't have a right, nice, case, nice answer about that. OK. Yeah. Thank you. Hi, I'm James Davis from Virginia Tech. Uh, I have a mercenary question. Uh, which is, does Microsoft make money either way? Uh, so they, I think they are making money uh, by deploying this into the Azure. Well, so I guess my question is like, if a user submits a job that fails, do they still have to pay Microsoft? Um, so, so, uh, so, so, uh, so, is, is, so um, I, I don't know if I have to tell this or not, but you know, uh, so I, I mentioned that this is the multi-tenant multi cluster mm -hmm. and then shared by multiple production groups, meaning that the multiple production groups, they have their own quota uh, in terms of the fair sharing. So of course, you know, depending on the money or some contribution, they have their quota. So virtually they have some, they are paying some value on it. Okay, thank yeah. you. So we have a couple of minutes left. So I have, I have one question. So you showed that the utilization for these clusters is not very high, yep. right? And this is consistent with other studies that have done utilization of non-GPU clusters as well in data centers. The utilization is quite low. Now, NVIDIA and others are creating software which will make it easier for multiple jobs to share one GPU card. Do you anticipate that this is going to become mainstream? And if so, if that's going to have any, make any difference to the utilization numbers that you show? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that will be a part of mainstream pretty soon. Because the, the multi, kind of, the sharing the one GPU among jobs is kind of mature, it's being mature these days. Uh, and then the remaining task in my view is that, you know, how to incorporate that into the scheduling policy in the cluster. Now, the way we are scheduling the GPUs is very monolithic, like either the one GPU or zero. But in case we are enabling the sharing, we have to have some mechanism to, to make kind of one GPU to be able to share it by multiple jobs. But I think that's really coming. Thank you. Uh, let's thank Myung-Jae once again.